If you're thinking about buying a house for the first time, but you're not sure if you're ready to or not, well then this is the video for you. I'm gonna go through the five ways that you know that you're ready to buy your first house. So stick around. Hey everyone, this is Danae Hewitt, your go-to DFW Realtor with Brico Realty Services. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I help people buy and sell their homes here in the DFW area. And I also help people outside of the DFW area move into the DFW area. And my goal is to make that as seamless as possible for you. So if that is you, my contact information is in the description below, along with my home buyers and my home sellers guide. So let me know how I can help you. Let's get into today's topic. The first sign that you know that you're not ready to buy your first house is you have poor credit or you simply don't have any credit at all. Credit plays a big role when you are going to purchase your house. And I go through all the things credit score in this video, so definitely check that one out. But for this video, know that you do have to have some credit if you are going to receive a mortgage to purchase your house. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, lenders wanted your credit score to be at least 620. Well, after the pandemic, investors and lenders upped that bare minimum to around 640. So that is the credit score that you are at a minimum needing to purchase a house right now. But also remember, the higher your credit score, the better financing that you're going to get, and also the lower interest rate that you're going to get. So making sure that your credit score is at least above a 640 is very important. But if you can get your credit score up over 700, then that can really help lower your interest payment that you're going to pay on the amount that you're going to borrow. The second sign that you may not be ready to purchase a house is you simply have too much debt. And again, this goes along with your credit score. When a mortgage lender is looking at your credit, they're going to look at how much debt you have versus how much income you have. And they call that your debt to income ratio. With your mortgage payment, taxes and insurance, and we'll get to that in just a minute. They want that plus any other debts that you have to be around 36% of what you bring home on a monthly basis. Meaning any car loans that you have, any student loans that you have, and now a potentially a mortgage, they want that amount to be about 36% or less than what you take home. So the best tip that I can give you is look at what you bring home on a monthly basis, down to the penny and also look at exactly how much you are paying in any debts right now. And if that is higher than 36%, then right now you're not ready to purchase a house. What I would recommend you doing is seeing where you have any extra funds so that you can pay off some of this debt so they can lower that debt to income ratio to be well under 36%. Now, with that point just being made, the third reason why you may not be ready to purchase a house is you simply just don't make enough money. Now, what does that mean? How much is enough money? And of course, that's going to vary by where you live, what you're looking for in a home, and how much debt you have. But really something to think about that you may not make enough money in order to purchase a home, it's not just to afford your mortgage payment, the interest on your mortgage, your taxes, your insurance, it's not just that. You also have to make sure that you have enough money to do the home maintenance on the house. If you're not going to be living in a townhome or in a condo, a lot of that maintenance has to fall on you, the homeowner. When you go to get a loan for your house, your mortgage lender is going to put together something that's called your PITI, and that is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. This is all wrapped into one payment and your mortgage lender wants this one payment to not exceed 28% of your overall income. Now, going back to the second sign, you may not be ready to purchase a house. If your PITI 
has to be 28% or less. Looking back on any other debts that you have, that means your other debts should only be 8% of what your total monthly income is. When you have your PITI all figured out with your lender and also how much your other debts are, you wanna make sure, again, that you are under 36% for your debt to income ratio. If you're really close to that or you're just over it, then you may not be making enough money in order to purchase a house in that price range. If you know that you would be happy with a home, maybe that's a little bit smaller or maybe a little further out into the city, then maybe you may be able to purchase a house. But again, it all depends on your situation and what you're willing to compromise with when you're buying your first house. The fourth sign that you may not be ready to purchase a house is you don't have enough money for your down payment and your closing costs. And those two things can get pretty expensive. I've done two videos here in my channel, one that goes through what down payments are and how much you can expect to pay on a certain price home here in DFW. And the other one is for the buyer's point of view. What are some costs that are associated with you purchasing a house? Those are great videos to check out because I give you legitimate numbers to help give you a rough idea of what it's gonna cost to purchase a house. Also, in the description below, I'm going to link an app that I use from Capital Title here in Texas. And that really helps me and buyers figure out how much down payment and closing costs they're going to need when they purchase their next house. So definitely download that. But it's not just your down payment and your closing costs when you are signing on the dotted line. Having enough money to afford a house is also furnishing that house. If you're going from a one or a two bedroom apartment to a three or four bedroom house, more square footage, you're gonna need to furnish it. It's also moving expenses. I mean, maybe you've got some friends with trucks that are willing to help you pack up and move. That's fine. But also you've got to help, you've got to pay them a little bit. You got to give them pizza and maybe some adult beverages for doing the job for you, right? But maybe you're just too old for that and you're just gonna hire movers. Well, that's an expense right there. So making sure that you have enough money saved for your down payment closing costs furnishing the home, any moving expenses is going to be really, really critical when you go to buy your first home. I do wanna point something out though. There is something out there in real estate that is called seller concessions. And maybe you've heard this from friends, family, whatever. Seller concessions are when you are under contract to purchase a house, you have upfront ask the seller for a certain number of dollars for them to give you back at the closing table. So really they're not actually giving you the money. It just means that you are bringing less money to the closing table. And maybe that amount is $5,000 and that's to cover your down payment or your closing costs. But I really wanna warn you against these. Sellers already have enough money and enough expenses to pay for when they are selling their house. They have their own closing costs. They have to pay realtor commissions. There's a lot that they have to pay and it's usually more than what the buyer has to pay. So to ask a seller to pay $5,000 more so you can cover your down payment or cover your closing costs might not sit well with a seller. Has it worked before? Absolutely, of course, because every situation is really different. Maybe the sellers are just desperate to sell and they are willing to give you money so that you can buy their house. Has that happened before? Of course it has. I've helped lots of clients successfully get seller concessions when they were buying a house. But I'll tell you, that was more in a neutral market, which means it wasn't really a buyer's market, really wasn't a seller's market. But right now, here we are, October 2021, we are in a seller's market. And there are multiple offers that are being put on houses for sale. And if you are asking for $2,000, $5,000 in seller's concessions, there's a good chance that the other three to five people putting offers in might not be asking for those seller concessions. So which offer do you think a seller is going to go with? The one that is asking them for money or the one that is giving them more money?
as you're thinking about purchasing a house, I don't want you to assume that the seller is going to be giving you any concessions in order to help you do that. Because again, it might not happen. Every situation is different. All right, we are down to the last sign that you may not be ready to buy your first house, and that is you don't plan to stay in it for the next three to five years. The reason why I say three to five years is in that time you want to build equity in your house. And then let's say in five years you turn around to sell it. You wanna make sure that you have enough money to pay for your closing when you go to sell your house out of your net proceeds, but also you wanna make sure that you've got a little extra money in there too, because that may be your down payment on your next house or maybe you're planning to rent, but you've got a lot of debt to pay off. So you wanna pay some of that off. So staying in your house for three to five years is a really good way to ensure that your home is building its value over that course of the three to five years, and you've got enough money to pay for your closing costs to sell it, and also make sure that you've got some extra money to do with whatever you want to do with it. Well, did this video help you make a decision? I hope that it did leave me a comment below. And if you are planning to move to the DFW area, I would love to help you out. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you next week.